Hello everyone, welcome back. So far we have seen about the respiration in case of mammals. In this video we are going to see about respiration in birds. Let's start with the differences in birds. First one is trachea. We know that mammals have incomplete tracheal cartilages. But in case of birds we have complete tracheal cartilages. And there are much more differences from one class of birds to the other class. Let's look at them one by one. The shape of the trachea is bent like this in case of black swan. The trachea is looped in case of upper swan. And the trachea is coiled like this in case of white spoonbill. And the trachea is much more complicated like this in case of hooping crane. And in some birds like penguins and beetles, the tracheal lumen is divided into two by a septum, which gives an appearance of double trachea. And at the bifurcation of the trachea, there is an organ called syrinx. This syrinx is responsible for production of voices in case of birds. And this is also called as organ of voice. Next, we'll see about bronchi. We know that mammals have many orders of bronchial divisions, but birds have only three orders of bronchial division. They are primary bronchi, secondary bronchi, and tertiary bronchi. Tertiary bronchi is also called as parabronchi. This is the place where the actual gaseous exchange takes place. The trachea bifurcates into two primary bronchus, left and right. The primary bronchus that is present outside the lung is called as extrapulmonary primary bronchus and the primary bronchus that is present inside the lung is called as intrapulmonary primary bronchus. The primary bronchi further divides to form secondary bronchi. The secondary bronchi are classified into four groups based on their locations. They are mediodorsal, medioventral, lateroventral and laterodorsal. There are certain connections to the hair sacs from the lungs. So the primary bronchus divides to form secondary bronchi and from the secondary bronchi the tertiary bronchi divides. Tertiary bronchi from the dorsal branches runs parallelly to the ventral branches. This parallelly running parabronchi is called as paleopulmonic parabronchi and the air flows in the paleopulmonic parabronchi in a single direction. This paleopulmonic parabronchi is present in all species of birds. And there is another type of parabronchi called neopulmonic parabronchi. This parabronchi is present in the caudolateral portion of the lungs and the air flows in both the direction in neopulmonic parabronchi. This neopulmonic parabronchi is absent in case of penguins and emus. So the penguins and emus have only paleopulmonic parabronchi. In birds, the lungs are rigid and small. They do not contribute much to the ventilation. So the ventilation is majorly contributed with the help of hair sacs. There are nine hair sacs in case of birds. They are cervical hair sac. Cervical hair sacs are paired, which means they are present in both the sides. And next is interclavicular, which is an unpaired hair sac and cranial thoracic, which is also paired air sac and uh, caudal thoracic they are paired and abdominal air sacs are also paired. These air sacs are divided into two groups namely cranial group and caudal group. Cervical, interclavicular and cranial thoracic comes under cranial group and caudal thoracic abdominal comes under caudal group. During respiration the volume of air in the cranial and the caudal groups are balanced equally. So how birds do respire? Let's see, when the inspiration occurs, the air sacs expands. So the air from the atmosphere goes through the neopulmonic parabronchi into the caudal air sac. And during expiration, the air sac contracts. So the air from the caudal air sacs goes through the neopulmonic parabronchi into the paleopulmonic parabronchi. And during the second phase of inspiration, again the air sacs expands. So the air that is present in the paleopulmonic parabronchi goes into the cranial air sac and during the second phase of expiration the air sac again contracts. So the air inside the cranial air sac goes back into the atmosphere. So the air moves from atmosphere into the caudal air sac and then into the paleopulmonic parabronchi and from there into the cranial air sac and again back into the atmosphere. So this cycle continues. The air flows in the parabronchi. 
certain tube like divisions originate from the parabronchi these are called as air capillaries these air capillaries are closely associated with the blood capillaries from the blood vessels this is the place where actual gaseous exchange takes place in case of births and this is how the respiration occurs in case of births thank you for watching this video if you find this video informative kindly share with your friends thank you